What's going on guys, it's your boy Sam Paddy Projects back at you again with another video on the Audi TT and today we're doing something a little bit special. We are going to be installing the Stance Plus coilovers on the Audi TT. Now I'm not sure how difficult this is going to be but we're soon going to find out and these coilovers were only £300 so I'm not expecting the world from them but our current suspension actually has a few issues here and there which I'm going to show you throughout the video. So it's a well needed, uh, I don't know if it's an upgrade because the Germans probably put a lot of money into engineering the suspension. However, it is um, probably like 14 years old. So I'm guessing these are going to be better, but we're going to install them, we're going to do a review, we're going to see what's going on, see if they're worth getting and yeah, let's jump straight in. So let's loosen up these lug bolts and get the car up in the air. We're gonna do the rear first, so that's gonna be a spring and a shock absorber separate. So with the wheel off, we can expose the shock absorber. And that's a 21 mil bolt on that. So grab your breaker bar and loosen it up. And I grabbed a ratchet spanner just to undo it the rest of the way. So we're going to remove a bit of the arch line in to expose the 16mm bolts holding in the top of the shock. It can be a bit tight so break a bar is advised but move slowly because we don't want to snap them. There we go. And don't lose this washer either, nearly got away from me. So here's the old shock absorber. Now. After it had been compressed, we can see how slowly that actually comes back out. That is shot to pieces. So we need the top mount off it. So we're just gonna cut off the existing boot, which new hardware is advised. Vice grip the shock and gun off the top bolt. Yeah, definitely should have got some new ones. And with that done, we just want to future-proof this collar because we are going to be adjusting it. So let's get some copper grease on that. And here's the new shock. So let's put the top mount on top and use a go-through ratchet and an Allen key to tighten that all in. Can't forget about the cap. So let's put the new spring in. So you're wondering, Sam, I didn't see you take the spring out. That's because I didn't record it. So that's where I put the brake bar to pull it down to get the leverage. It goes in the same way it comes out. And the new shock is going in. And the top mount bolts. So it's time to jack up the front of the car now, whip the wheel off and start working on the front. And you're going to need an M14 multi-spline bit to take off the collar. And with that now off, you want to take off the drop link and you want to use the, your go-through ratchet again with a Allen key. And there we go. And with that off and out of the way, because we didn't have a spreader tool, we just used a chisel, which I'd highly recommend the spreader tool. Link in the description, picture on screen. And with the hammer, we just tapped it out. With the 13 mil bolts on the top of the strut loosened, we were able to get it out. And with our spring clamps, we spring clamped the McPherson strut down and removed the top hat. Not forgetting the vice grips holding it steady. With 
with the new one copper greased, we went and used the rag this time with the vice grips and tightened up the top bolt on the old top hats. And now to set the height. We're gonna measure 20 mil from the threads to the middle collar and that'll be our ride height. With a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of wiggling and jiggling, we managed to get the strut in. With it now slotting into place, we just used the jack to just jimmy it up a little bit until it was going in. And with it in, as you can see here, you want to make sure it all lines up, that crease lines up with the collar. And as you can see, it needs to go a little bit further, so with a little bit of wiggling, it went in. Before we tighten it up, let's give this bolt a little clean. check off fitment so that looks about bang on where i want it probably not even a finger's worth of clear clearance there we've checked if it's scrubbing we've gone full full lock left and right and it seems to be fine we've also test driven it and it's all right over bumps doesn't doesn't scrape or hit the under tray or front bumper and there we go there slightly higher at the back but i'm not really too fussed about that at the moment um, we did do some adjusting on the back, but you know, let's do the finger test. Yeah, one finger. And just to fill up these wheel wells, I think we could do with some spaces. So we'll get bang on fitment after we get an alignment and get some spaces in. But let's go and drive the car and I can tell you about if these are worth getting or not. So it is a week later. Yes, I've had a haircut. Yes, it's absolutely freezing. It's almost bloody snowing outside, but let me tell you about these coilovers. So they aren't the most comfortable, but when you're getting coilovers, you're not buying them for comfort. You're buying them to be able to have that little bit of extra handling and lower center of gravity and just an all round better sort of sport sort of feeling to your car. So as you can see, I'm bouncing up and down a little bit. I am, I am, I can't lie about that. But the question that I wanted to ask myself after getting these is are they daily drivable? What are they like over bumps? And are they worth actually installing? And the answer to that is yes, they are worth installing. And going over bumps and everything like that, yes, you have compromised your um, comfortability a bit, but not to a degree where it's not daily drivable. And for what they give you, I've banged it around the lanes, all within legal parameters, of course. And yeah, it, the car is so much so much better to drive it with from that perspective, if you know what I mean. They're not too bad, but there's a couple of things about this job that you ought to know. Because the bit that you saw um, was the driver's side. So the driver's side, was, let me be honest, nice and easy, but the passenger side, not so much. So the bolt that goes through and actually holds the collar together, um, the M14 multi-splined one, that actually snapped. Got it out about a quarter of the way-ish, and I saw it, was, I was giving it too, too much hoof, so I thought, okay, let me get the blowtorch out, let me heat it up and see if I can get it out that way. Went full send, bolt snapped, car was stuck in the, up in the air for a couple of days while I ordered a new one. So that's only like, say six pounds or so. So it's definitely worth getting a bit of uh, critical spare emergency hardware just in case. And what's the worst that could happen for a fiver? Like you might as well spend the money. And also another thing that happened, um, I had to use a flat headed bit to kind of split the collar. And yeah, that method isn't the best method. And of course, if you don't actually go out and get yourself an actual spreader tool, which I actually went and done afterwards. Hold on, I might I might be about to be in a crash here. Hang about. There we go. Right, so I went out and got 
an actual spreader tool because if I'm going to be working on German cars I'm definitely going to need one of these and when I used this it made my life so much easier because on the second inspection I just went around and checked everything as I do and I realized that um, uh, the coilover had to come down a little bit and where I used that made things so much easier so definitely if you're going to attempt this job just go out get yourself one of these i paid a tenner for two of them and using two of them at the same time honestly it just makes everything buttery smooth i'm a driveway mechanic or can't even say that i'm a driveway diy enthusiast and it made my life so much easier so much better we learn as we go along and man managed to do the job that i wanted to do so i think that's that's all my thoughts on it um, we're going to get some spaces at some point just to widen everything out make it fill the arch gap and just get a get a nice stance and so stance plus you're done all right with these coilovers and that's going to be all from me so if you like what you've seen hit that subscribe button go on it's just down there it helps me out a bunch and yeah i'll catch you on the next one it's your boy sam Paddy projects